we're going to look at a bunch of different examples of connected edge weighted graphs and we're going to use Dijkstra's algorithm to find out the minimum path weights from vertex A as the source to all the other vertices in the graph. Now you should have already watched the video on Dijkstra's algorithm before looking at this video of examples. What I'm going to do in this video is run through the algorithm without writing out every single step. I'm just going to keep track of what I'm doing using a little table. So what I'll do is I'll start by writing all of the vertices over here in a table and I'm starting with A as the source. So I have A, B, C, D, E, and F and you may notice that this is in fact the graph we used in the uh, original video describing the algorithm. So I'm going to use this as a benchmark and then we'll look at some other graphs as well. So what we do is we start off with saying that the label of vertex A is zero because it takes um, weight zero to get from A to itself and we set all of the other ones equal to infinity. Now the next step of the algorithm says that we need to put our our source vertex into our set S and I'm going to use red to mean that a vertex has been put into the set S so this is keeping track of my solutions and um, so when I when I put a, a red zero here it means that A is now in the set S and its label is fixed at zero. Okay so now the next step of the algorithm says to go and look at the neighbors of A which are not yet in the set S so A will affect B, C, and D and when you look at those you'll see that we have to take the minimum between infinity and 3 so we get 3. Here the minimum between infinity and 1 is 1 and similarly here we get 2. So this vertex here affected these three vertices and not the other ones so we leave those like that. The algorithm then says that we need to find one of the vertices which has minimum label which is not yet in the solution and so we go ahead and we choose that. There is only one with a minimum label and that is C with one. So now C belongs to S and we are done with it. So when we're done with it what we have to do is look at how it affects the next piece. So we start with C now and we look at how its neighbors are affected. So we're looking at vertex C in the graph. We don't look at A because it's already done. We only look at the other neighbors. So that would be vertex E and F. So vertex E gets a label, it had a label of infinity so this label will definitely be better and its label is now 5. So E gets labeled 5. Then F gets labeled 3. It's the minimum between 3 and infinity so we take 3. And it didn't affect anything else. D stayed the same and B stayed the same. But we're finished with C so now the next part of the algorithm says to look at these remaining ones and find a minimum weight among those and that is D. So now D is part of the solution set and we look at how it affects its neighbors. Here's D. We do not look back at A. It's already done. So we only look over to E. It does affect it because E had a label of 5 but now we see that it can get a label of 3. So D affects E by making it this a 3. It doesn't affect F so that stays and it doesn't affect B. So now what we do is we look at these remaining labels and we have to choose one with a minimum value but they all have the same value. So it doesn't matter which one we choose and in the previous video when I explained the algorithm I randomly went with B first. It does not matter, we'll do that again. We'll just say let's take B. What we do is we look at B and we see if any of its neighbors get affected. Well, its only neighbor is A and it was already completed. So nothing gets affected, so these just stay as they are. And now we look at this step of the algorithm and choose a minimum among these two. It doesn't matter which one we choose, so we can go ahead and choose E. E doesn't have any effect on F because in fact if you look at E, its neighbors are both completed. They are C and D. So this one is unaffected and then finally we select F. And so now we can just read off the solutions like this that the minimum weighted the minimum weight of a path from A to any other vertex is as follows for A it's 0 to get to B it's 3 to get to C it's 1 to get to D 2 and then for E and F it's also 3 so this keeps track of the algorithm in a nice convenient way let's take a look at another example one that we have not seen yet 
Okay, so here we have another weighted graph and the uh, the question is the same. We still want to get from vertex A to all of the other vertices with a minimum weighted path. So the first step is we're going to write out all the vertices. A is the source, then B, C, D, E, and F. We're going to continue by saying, okay, well we start, step one was to put the value of A to zero, the label of A, and the rest of them to infinity. And we also want to make sure that we put our source vertex zero into our solution set. So it's finished. When we get to red, we're totally finished. Now, what we do is we look at A. How does it affect its neighbors? Well, its neighbors are B and C. For vertex B, the minimum between two and what it used to be, which was infinity, clearly we want the minimum to be two. And similarly for three, we get, uh, sorry, for C, we get the label three. But the others remain unaffected. The next step of the algorithm says to look along here and find the vertex with minimum label and add that to the solution set. So that would be vertex B in this case, which has a label of two. So now we look at vertex B and we look at its neighbors, which are not yet in the solution set. In other words, not yet red. So that includes vertex C. We look to vertex C and we check what is the minimum between three and the label of this guy plus this edge. Well, the label of this guy was two plus this edge makes four. So the minimum between four and three, well, it's still three. So it's important to notice that this one remains as a three. How does B affect D? Well, D used to be infinity, so we're definitely going to choose the number instead of the infinity. And the label of B was two together with this edge makes three. B also affects E. So B will affect E in the following way. We can take the label of B, which was two, together with this edge, so we get five. And then if we look at the label for F, it's also affected. We have two plus three is five. So B affected quite a few vertices. Now what we're going to do is we will look along here and select a vertex with minimum label. So that can be thought of as C. So now C is completed and we look at its neighbors. So its neighbors are B, but B is already finished. So we then look to E. E is the only neighbor that is not yet in red. And we look at it and we say, well, E used to have a label of five, but now it could have a label of the label of C plus one, so four. And in fact, that is less. So we go ahead and we write a four for the label of E. But D and F were unaffected by this, so D and F stay like that. And again, we need to select one with minimum value, so that would be D in this case. We look at D, and its neighbors are B, F, and E. B is already finished, but E and F are not finished. So let's see if we can do anything for those. If we look at E, E has a label of four right now, and if we consider vertex D, then what we'll do is we say, okay, vertex D has a label of three, and to get to E from there, you have to add two, so that would be a five. But five is no better than what it used to be. It used to be a four, so we keep it at four. Whereas for F, F used to be at five, but vertex D has label three. If you add in the edge from D to F, we get four and that is an improvement. So we put four. Now we just have to choose one of minimum label, doesn't matter which, so I'll just go ahead and choose E. And if you look at E, the only neighbor of E, which is not yet done in red, is F. So you look at this and you say, well, the label of E is already four. If we add two to that, we'll get six. But six is not an improvement over what we already had, so it remains at what we had, four. And now we take the only last guy left and we put it into the solution set F. And then we can read down the list and these are the minimum weights of paths from A 
to each of these vertices in the graph given this weight function on the edges. So if you feel like you're getting used to this idea, this algorithm, now is a good time to try a slightly bigger example. So here we have a graph with a few more vertices than we had before and some of the edge labels are quite large and I just started off the table with what we always want. Again A is our source and the rest of them are starting off at infinity and what I think is a good idea for you to try is to pause the video and try to fill in the rest of this table to see if you can use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the minimum weights of paths from A to each of these other vertices to solve this on your own, oh it looks like I'm missing one of these labels, so this one is a 2 right here, this edge. Okay, so now you should be able to solve this completely on your own, and when you have a solution, go ahead and continue the rest of this video. So now I'll solve it. What we do is we start by putting the source into our solution, and that has a label of 0. Then we look at the neighbors of that source, and we compare we have 0 plus 5 for D and so that's definitely an improvement over infinity so we have a 5 there similarly we have a 4 for C and a 7 for B and the rest of these are unchanged they're still at infinity right now now we go ahead and we select one of minimum label so that's C and C has two neighbors that are um, that are not A so that's B and H so if you look at B we can take the minimum between what it had before, which was 7, and the label of 4 plus 2. So we think that's an improvement. So we'll take the 6. That's an improvement. And C also affects H over here. So H now gets a label of 13. But everything else is unaffected. So this stays as 5, this stays as infinity, and infinity, and infinity. Okay, now we go ahead and we choose of smallest label, so that is D with a label of 5. So we're over here with D, and its neighbor, other than A, which was already done, is F. So F is definitely affected because it used to have a label of infinity, so now it gets a label of 14. So F gets 14, but the other ones are all unaffected, so this stays at 13 and these are all the same. 6 and infinity. Okay, we go ahead and we choose one of minimum label. In this case, it's B now. So we look at B, and its neighbors are C, which is already done, A, which is already done, and E. So we look at this one, E, and we realize that the label of B is 6, and when you add on this 25, you get 31. And definitely 31 is an improvement over infinity, so when we look at E, we put 31 but nothing else was affected, so these stay at 14, infinity, 13, and infinity. Again, we look for a minimum label, so that in this case is 13 for vertex H. So we're up here at vertex H, and we see how it affects F and I. So how does it affect I? Well, vertex I is still at infinity, so what we're going to have is the label of H, which is 13, plus the 3 gives us 16. 16 is definitely an improvement over infinity, so we keep that. Now we look at its other neighbor, which is F, and F had a label of 14, and now we wonder if it's better to take the label of H, which is 13, and add 20. It's not better, so we keep 14 as it is. 14. Okay? So that was all that it affected. E stayed the same at 31, and G is still at infinity right now. Again, we do repeat the process. So we take a minimum label, in this case it's 14, for vertex F. We take a look at the, um, take a look at the neighbors of vertex F. Those are H and D. But H and D are already completed, so nothing changes. So when nothing changes, we just write these things again. We have 31 infinity and 16. So we go ahead and we repeat, take the minimum label. In this case it's the one with 16, vertex i. Let's take a look at vertex i. Its neighbors are h, which is already done, but don't worry about it, and g. g is not done, so what happens? Well, g has a label of infinity still, so it's certainly going to be better to take the label of i, which is 16, and add 2, this edge, which gives us 18. So we now have 18 as the label of G. 
And what's left is E still has this label of 31. And again, we take a minimum, which is 18. We look at G, everything is done except for E. And if we look at the label of G, which is 18, and we add this edge, 10, that's 28. And in fact, 28 is an improvement over the previous label of E. Even though it looks like it's shorter because it takes fewer edges, in fact, going the long way around ends up having a less weight. So now we take a minimum of what's left, there's only one thing left, and that is 28 as the label of vertex E. And now these red labels are the minimum weights from vertex A to every other vertex in the graph. I hope you achieved the same answer when you tried it yourself.